Ha hallelujah. Amen, everybody. And as usual, I'm just so impressed to be online. Um, I really honor the, the work of, of all of you, uh, Pastor Newby, and um, even your brother, and I forgot your name, but I just, I just really honor the work that you guys are doing, and I approach this with the utmost respect. I, I really, I'm just, just giving you guys the praise you deserve as faithful followers that in these tough times you found a not robbery to do the best you could during the circumstances and you are doing great works. It blesses me continually. So I thank you and I honor that this moment to share with you. Tonight we're going to look at, at 2 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11 through 12. I'm not going to read it. I, I, I want you, if you want to read it later on, it, it's fine. But I want to, I want to describe it um, to you. The title of my word tonight is The Beauty of Mourning. In these chapters, we see a very beautiful thing happening. We see the man of God, David. And the man of God, David, who was a fighting man, who was a, who was a gifted man, who was a, a musician, who who wrote the, 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 the book of songs, the song book of the Bible, which, which, is, which is Psalms. He wrote the most of the Psalms, which is a central part of, of our Bible. What we find him in this instant mourning. You see, Saul had died, and David was mourning Saul. And it, it struck me as, as a bit strange, and it, and it struck me as a bit saddening, and it struck me as something that's really beautiful. Because all of David's life, he, he didn't know very much good. He didn't have very much good that happened to him. He spoke of his life as being conceived in sin and, and his growing as being shaped in iniquity. He didn't think that he, he, was, he was amazing or he, he was better than anybody else. He, 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 he was aware of, of, of just how far he was from the Lord. You see, when David was a very young child, they, they put him out. They, they, they relegated him to the task of tending sheep. And tending sheep is not an easy task then, nor is it very easy right now. Because sheep have to wander. You, you have to move them around you. You have to keep your eyes on them. You, 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 you just can't take your attention off them. And if you're a child, and, and if you're always outside, that says a lot to you. That, that, that tells you right away you are not the apple of the eye of the people around you because David had seven other brothers. And David spoke about how he had to defend the sheep from, from bears and, and from lions all as a boy. David was so forgotten and so out of mind that when the man of God, the prophet Samuel, came to, to anoint the new king of Israel. He even brought all the elders of the town with him to witness this event. And he, he looked upon each of David's brothers, and, and, and no one thought to, to, to even ask about, to even think about calling David in, because so lowly was, was their opinion of him, their youngest child, that, that Samuel had to ask, is there another one? And the Lord God said to him, there was another one. That means that, that the prophecy of Samuel was not as sharp as it should have been. Hear me now. If, if, if you have the gift of prophecy, if you have the gift of speaking, if you have the gift of praising, if you have the gift of praying, fasting, even tithing, if you have these gifts and sometimes it misses, I tell you, it's, it's all right, you see, because it, it's, not the, it's not the excellence that we're looking for, it's the willingness because the righteous man fall that seven times. You must also understand Samuel was in a circumstance of resistance to what he was trying to do. Don't ever think that, that when you're trying to move ahead just because you might be on a holy mission or, and that you, you, were, you heard from God that there's not going to be resistance, but that's when there is the most resistance. In fact, in the book of Daniel, the, the angel who had a message for Daniel said that he would have been there sooner, but he was resisted by, by, by the enemy. But Samuel remained faithful, and Samuel did anoint David. But right after anointing, David had to, to go outside. 
And then we know that the Bible says that there was, there was a, a danger. There was a danger in the land. And danger in the land was, of course, Goliath. And, and, and because of David's ill treatment, to be, because David was outside, because David had no love, because David had to fight every step of the way, because David had to be outside in the rain, in the cold, because sheep only sleep at, at most maybe four hours a night, yet he had to deal with this. Dealing with Goliath was a small thing to him. Let me tell you, as a people, there were times when we were outside in the field too. There were times when, when we had nothing else but, but maybe, maybe some, some animals to look after. There were times in, in which we could not even worship properly. David could not worship properly because he had to tend to the sheep and shepherds were under a ban because they had to keep the sheep at all times and that was David's situation. You see, there, there is blessings that the Lord has for you right now as a person. There are, there are things that the Lord wants to do for you right now and perhaps you can even taste them. Perhaps you can even feel them. Perhaps you knew it even as a child. But let me tell you, the enemy is resisting. But, but, but the, the prophecy, the word of God, it, it, it may tarry, but it's always on time. And, and it seems like even for us as a people that, that whenever it's the right time, we tend to do great things, even for those who don't even love us. I'm recalling even in the, the, the last voting spell, it, it was not the, the people who had the power, but it was the people who didn't have the power who, who slayed that Goliath at that time. And it was an easy thing, d despite everything else. And the minute David did what he did, he, 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 he began, he was rewarded. He, he was for the first time perhaps given, given love, given a home, given a place, given reward. He was even given a wife. And, and I can imagine David sitting up there in a bed for the first time in his life. So when David was mourning for Saul, Saul who tried to even take his life, Saul who, th who threw javelins at David, Saul who brought the war of the entire nation against David, and we experienced these same things. But David, by mourning, is saying that I've never had any other place to go. No one has ever even given me a little bit. David is saying that he is faithful even over the little bit of love that he had even at one time because he never known it. And sometimes we might have even ourselves been in love and only had a little bit of it. And, 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 and sometimes we may have been in a situation even in our past where we, we only had a little bit of it. And, and, and sometimes we've tried our best at circumstances and have only have a, a little bit of it but but the Lord God says that if you are faithful over a little that he can reward you with much and and that is part of David's success and he mourned for Saul word of God says so, says furthermore that that David had the gift of music and I tell you I, I believe that is something that the Lord God has given us also as a people David was also a man of praise, and I believe the Lord God, that, that's something he's given us to as a people. I'm sure you've noticed those two or three, four churches on one street. Let me tell you, that, that is not a thing to, to, be, to, be, to be ashamed of. That is not a thing to look like. It shouldn't be that way because you need not be like, like David's first wife who laughed at him when he danced outside of his clothes because, you see, we know from where our strength coming from. We know from where our health coming from. We know that we were out there in the fields. We know that we were out there when no one loved us. We know that we were ready and, and able and every time to show love for the circumstance that we were in. But we know also that every time we looked up, we found a problem. David began his, his trek to greatness just by bringing lunch. You see? People will try to give you menial tasks to, to keep you in your place, but when you do that task to, your, to the best of your ability, you are displaying what, what, what the Lord requires you to do. Hear me. Even the Lord Jesus Christ had a day job. He was a carpenter. Even, even, even Paul, who, who was one of the most gifted, brilliant minds that ever existed, he was a tent maker. 
let me tell you. So if you are right now or not where you're supposed to do, supposed to be, I'm telling you, go ahead, deliver that lunch. Go ahead and be that carpenter. Go ahead and mop that floor. Go ahead and take care of that sick person. Go ahead and even take care of yourself. You may not even have something to do today, but you have to raise the kind of praise that David had for the Lord. You see, David never was expected to be anything at all, but the minute he showed the excellence that the Lord has given him, David was in trouble. If you today have had trouble because people are jealous of the witness within you, or people don't like the way you shout, people don't like the way you praise, people don't like anything about you, I tell you, lift up your head, O ye gates. David woke up one morning and he was a, he was a sheep herder and went to bed one night and he was a king. And David had such quality. Such quality which, which, which we display a lot, but people mock us for. I'm remembering of all those times our young men were slain in, in the streets by bullets for doing nothing. And I'm, I recall of, of how their family says, we forgive. Of, of how, how we said, can we all just get along? And, and I remember how we were mocked at these things. You see, there's a, there's a beauty to mourning. You see, we were not called to, to hate people. David was not called Saul. See, David knew from, from, from where cometh his strength. David was not interested in, in revenge upon Saul. David was interested on in doing what's right. And, and if you keep on doing what's right, even though people are going to mock you for it, I say, let them mock you for it. You see, it's even in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And David, he walked this way. I recall what Jesus said about grieving, how it's a beautiful thing. The Lord God said that, that, that blessed are those who mourn because they shall be comforted. Those who grieve shall be consoled. He says, furthermore, he'll give us the oil of joy for our mourning. And, and it's, it's as if the oil that David was getting and the oil that we're getting for the, the mourning of, of, of our, the way we mourn and we mourn, we do mourn constantly. We mourn in our spirits for what's happening. We mourn in our spirits for the life we have to live, understanding how people can hate us and despise us, and that, that despising has crept even into our own souls. So we mourn the, the loss of glory that we know we should have had, but the Lord said he's going to give us the joy of all for this morning. And having this joy of, of mourning, it's like being one of those ready virgins. I tell you, it is not what people have done in the past. It's not what people are doing to you now. It's whether or not you're going to mourn this thing properly, whether or not you're going to deal with this thing right, whether or not you're going to walk right. I remember thinking how, of, of, of how I wish that, that things in my life had not happened. And I'm sure we all feel the same way. But we also have to remember we have the victory. And the victory is we are not going to allow anyone to, to cause us to bring us so low as to hate. So when I look at David, and my first mind says, what is his problem? This man tried to kill him. This man took his, took his wife. This man took, took everything from him and still tried to, to kill him. But David had praise, you see. David had no time to, to dwell on the things that were, that were old and, and, and fit to be thrown out. David had praise. And I'm telling you, that's the way out of the circumstance. That's the way, out, that's the way to win. And, and that's why we are a people. And that's why you are a person who need not be concerned about what's going on. You just have to do like David did and lift your praise, you see. Praise is, praise is what is in central to, to the Bible. That if you just declare that Jesus is Lord, that means that anger is not Lord. Re, re, revenge is not Lord. The Lord said anyway, vengeance is mine. And though we have a lot to be sorrowful for, and, 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 and though we have a lot to even want 
payback for. And though David had that, yet still we mourn. And I tell you, there's a beauty to it. There's a beauty to it all because if you believe that, that the Lord God reigns in heaven, you just have to do what David did. You just have to praise him. You just have to dance. You just have to sing your songs. You just have to do what you're supposed to do. And if you're out there in the fields today, if you're not where you're supposed to be, if you know that, 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 that you are being done wrong, if you can't see any way out of your circumstance today, I say do like David did and lift the praise. While he was out there on the backside of the mountain, he wrote psalms. While he was out there on the backside of the mountain, he wrote songs. While he was out there on the backside of the mountain, he learned to, to play the harp. And all these things that we're learning while we're out in the field, that were not number one, that were number 10, even number 11, even less, I tell you, we're learning things that are going to enable us at the right time to stand up and show how this thing is supposed to be done. Even if we didn't even love the Lord, history shows that these things go around. And I'm telling you that it shall come to pass. That the thing that we all seek shall come to pass. That it doesn't matter how much you, you, you've lost. It matters if you're going to stand your ground. And stand your ground. Stand your religious ground. Stand your praise ground. Stand your integrity ground. Don't let yourself be caught up in what they do and mourn the things that you've lost mourn because it's right to do but also mourn in a way that brings on the praise and i thank you lord for what you're doing in our lives today i thank you for all the good things that, that you're doing in, in our in our lives father god i lift us up as a people oh father god you saw you see the things that are facing us, Lord, the things that are attacking us, Lord, things that have nothing to do with what we've done but who we are. Yet, Lord, we worship you on, on every street corner. We, we worship you on, in, on every channel, O oh Father God. We, we worship you in every possible way, O oh Father God. We worship you, O oh God, in, in the cotton fields. We, we worship you in the sugarcane fields. We, we worship you in the tobacco fields, O oh Father God. We worship you in the mines, O oh Father Lord, in the, in the steel mills, O oh Jesus. Uh, and we, we, we worship you, O oh Father God, in them stores. We, everywhere we go, on, on, the, on the train, O oh God, on the bus, but even in our cars. We even lost jobs for praising you, O oh God. And Lord God, we praise you, O oh Father Lord, because we are feeding on manna. And we thank you, Father God. We love you, we adore you. And in your holy name we say, Amen.